Good afternoon. Welcome this afternoon to our Monday Thursday service. A uh, word or two about the service. Um, you can find it, as all the services have been, on our website, pcuit.org, in a PDF file. You just click on that, it'll come up on your screen. Uh, you can either print it out or um, uh, uh, just read it off of your screen at your computer or laptop or whatever it is you have. Um, I want to thank uh, um, the little staff that's here uh, this afternoon. Uh, we've got uh, three failures. Kathy Failer, who's playing the piano, and uh, Randy Failer, who's running the uh, uh, technical side, and Tommy Failer, who's supervising all of that. And I also want to thank uh, uh, Tom Michaelis, who's our elder this afternoon, and my wife Linda, who's here as well. If you have prayer requests, as in the past, you can um, text my phone, 254-723-2221, and uh, Linda's got it, and she can take down uh, those requests and will give it to me at the proper time during the service. Um, as uh, we're going to receive the sacrament today uh, via uh, drive through I will remind you that uh, you just come on through the covered porch and uh, you'll receive it from myself and the elder. Uh, you keep the cup for yourself, don't, don't hand it back to us. And if you brought your offering, you can uh, pick that up at that time. We also have, um, from the Board of Education, we have some packets of uh, crafts that were bought for Easter Sunday for the kids to do. The, and they've been made, made into packets, and if you'd like to, uh, to uh, pick one of those up for yourself, for your kids, for your grandkids, well, you can get that this afternoon as well. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have service at 7 p.m., and Sunday, it's only at 8.30 a.m. No drive-in, no coming up here until uh, 10 to 12 for communion. So um, that's the schedule. I would remind you that uh, we are to examine ourselves before we receive the sacrament. As a child of God, am I sorry for my sins? Do I truly believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and that he gives me his body and blood and his supper for the forgiveness of sins? And do I honestly intend with the help of God to amend my sin and live as a child of God? Please give your attention to that. We begin by singing... Uh, the first hymn, which is Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 116. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from, chap, from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then shall they take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its heads with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall let none of it Re, uh, remain until the morning anything that remains uh, until the morning you shall burn in this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and in all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations as a statute forever you shall keep it as a feast. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 26. Now on the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. He took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. O Lord, have mercy on us. Your table I approach, dear Savior, hear my prayer. Let not an unrepentant heart prove hurtful to me there. Lord, I confess my sins and mourn their wretched hands. A contrite heart be sure to find forgiveness at your hands. Your body and your blood, once slain and shed for me, are taken at your table, Lord, in blessed reality. Search not how this takes place, this wondrous mystery. God can accomplish vastly more than what we think could be. O oh, grant, most blessed Lord, that earth and hell combine may not about this sacrament raised out within my mind. Oh, may I never fail to thank you day and night for your true body and true blood. Oh, God, my peace and light. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is drawn from the Gospel reading, just a few short words. And he took a cup. He took a cup, an ordinary cup. No fancy holy grail, no jewel-encrusted silver chalice. He took a cup just one that they were using that evening to drink the wine from as they celebrated the Passover. Just another cup. Now the interesting thing is the Passover did not demand any drinking at all. 
It talked about what they were to eat, how they were to eat the, the, the lamb in its entirety, along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, but there was no mention in the Passover of drinking anything. The only thing that's mentioned as far as a liquid is the blood of the lamb, which was drained out of the lamb and had been carefully put on the doorposts and lintel of their homes to keep the angel of death away. But no statement in that account in Exodus 12 that they drank any particular beverage at all. But here we hear that Jesus took a cup. And they'd already eaten the bread. And he'd already said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He had already said, this bread that I'm holding right here and what you're going to take and eat, not just look at, not just talk about, take and eat, is his very body which would be shed the next day on the cross. But now he takes a cup. Not the cup. The cup they would not have been able to handle. You might recall that some weeks before, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, that is James and John, had come up with them and had asked him for something. And she said, say that these two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. And Jesus had answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink. They said to him, we are able. He said to them, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant, but is for those to whom it was prepared by my Father. The cup was the one that Jesus will pray about in the Garden of Gethsemane. If it is your will, please take this cup away from me, Jesus will say, but not my will, but thine be done. Take the cup away from me. That is the cup of wrath. The cup of anger. The cup of destruction. Jesus would take that cup. The cup. That had been mentioned numerous times in the prophets. He would take the cup. He gives them a cup. But he says, take, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This was startling new. They knew about eating bread. Now they're told to drink from a cup, and they're supposed to be drinking, well, blood. The blood of Jesus. Jesus. This is my blood, which is shed for you. They weren't used to drinking blood. All blood was drained out of every animal before it was eaten. All blood was always taken away. Personally, I think that the food would have been pretty dry without some blood in it. But they always drained it out because that was the life force. And God had said, do not drink anything with blood in it. And now Jesus says, take this cup. A cup, but this cup right here is my blood of the New Testament, New Covenant, the new arrangement. This is my blood. Not like the old one. The old one, all it did is protect from the angel of death. That was the old arrangement. This one would provide forgiveness of sins. This one would provide something far greater than blood on a doorpost. All of them, while were allowed to leave Egypt and go on their way and eventually out into the wilderness, they all died. They all died out there because of their sin. Except two, that is. But this cup, a cup, a routine cup, 
nothing fancy, nothing unusual. We, we use ones that are made out of plastic. Nothing fancy. But in there, this is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. We receive something that is far more precious than anything people in the Old Testament would have understood. Oh, they could sacrifice animals and they sacrificed lambs for that purpose, in fact. But this is something we receive, we receive within us the very body and blood of Jesus. That very body and blood of Jesus, which the next day would be nailed to a cross. That very body and blood of Jesus, which would drip from his head and from his hands and from his side. That very body and blood of Jesus that would pay our sins by drinking the cup. So much so that at near, right near the end he says, I thirst. He had taken on so much wrath and anger that that cup didn't quench anything. He needed something because he thirsted. We today receive from a cup. Now some today are moaning and groaning and complaining, and I think they think they're taking, with the current situation, the cup. They think that everything that's going bad is, is somehow or other God's punishment on us. God's punishment fell on Jesus. What we receive is not punishment, but forgiveness, and as Luther reminds us in the Catechism, life and salvation, not death and pestilence, not epidemics and destruction, life and salvation. Our lives are changed by that very body and blood given to us from a cup. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now you can come this afternoon from 5 until 6.30 and receive from a cup, but you will receive forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Do we have any prayer requests? We had two before the service, one for uh, Timothy Martindale, who happens to be my doctor and the failure's doctor who's got co contracted uh, uh, COVID-19. Also for John Ellis, a cousin of Susan Deffelson, who's uh, had quadruple bypass surgery yesterday in Nashville, Tennessee. Let us pray. Grant to us zeal for your house, O Lord, and love for the things of your kingdom. Preserve those who are unable to gather together as they wish, and grant them their desire quickly. Give your church harmony and peace to confess your word with one voice before the world. Cover us with the blood of Christ and grant us your spirit that we may walk in your ways and do your good, the good you desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of plagues and enemies that threaten in a world filled with conflict and terror, give us wise leaders, O Lord, that we may preserve from harm Guide those who make it administer our laws to act in timely and prudent ways, and give to all judges knowledge to render justice and mercy. Bless all military, emergency, and medical workers who defend and help us here and abroad, as well as all those who are working in essential tasks, often with very little protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As generously as you have given to us, O Lord, Teach us to be generous in giving, that the poor may not suffer want, nor your church be deprived of the resources to serve your purpose, both here and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy, Lord, 
spare your people and turn this pandemic away. Preserve the sick, comfort the fearful, and grant to the dying your peace. Heal us on behalf of those, hear us on behalf of those who have asked us to pray, particularly for Timothy Martindale and John Ellis. Give us healing in, in accordance with your will, strength to bear up on, under the burdens of this mortal life, and comfort and hope in this and every trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us your word and spirit, O Lord, that we may discern your son's presence in this body, bread and cup and leave the table with a good conscience of sins forgiven. Keep us in repentance that we may not be overcome by sin, but instead pursue goodness and righteousness all our days. Protect and cleanse the lips of those who eat and drink and remove their fears. For this testimony, testament is a promise to strengthen us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You know, O Lord, what we need. You promise never to abandon us. Help us to endure in faith and with a joyful countenance. Receive the blessings of your grace and the answers to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right and salutary. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again and that the serpent who was overcome by the tree of the garden might likewise be, by the tree of the cross, be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Lord of heaven and earth, we praise and thank you for having had mercy on those whom you created, sending your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he is betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and given to death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now in his body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve, and true faith with the life of the last one, the hearts and peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you of your mercy, which strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us. Defend us from all evil and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Amen.